and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let's take a moment to reflect on God's word and examine our sin. Let us think and confess our sins to God the Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left under. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, remove us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. As a call to the servant of the word of God, and by his authority, I therefore declare the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, and God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me, for you have filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? When you would be to me like a deceitful bird, like the waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be a thin out. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, the grace of the Lord. I deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. These are the words of life. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine, a form of people, full of facts to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another and show them honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and be with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be harmed with those associated with the worldly. Never be wise in your own sight. You pay no evil for evil, but give God to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, you will be spirit with all. For all they never avenge yourselves, but even to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will obey, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will be throwing holes on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These are the words of life. Please run.
acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. Last week's gospel reading had Peter proclaiming that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And from that time, Jesus began to teach his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, that he would suffer many things at the hands of the chief priests and Pharisees and scribes. And they would be killed. And that God would raise him back to life on the third day. With these powerful words, Jesus revealed what his earthly mission was in a nutshell. This is what he had come to do. But Peter and the other disciples had a flawed understanding of what Jesus had come to do. They saw him as a conquering hero, someone who would throw the dreaded and hated Romans out and reinstall them as leaders over the Jewish nation. And in fact, Peter said, this shall never happen to you. I won't allow it to happen. And Jesus again offers him the most stern of rebukes when he says, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but you have in mind the things of men. Peter and the other disciples were looking at the time when they would become the rulers of Israel, that they would be on Jesus' right hand, handling all the necessary duties of rulers. They didn't like the Romans, and they saw that the Jews had somewhat strayed from what their original calling was. And Jesus was here in their mind to set it straight. Peter and the rest of the disciples didn't understand what the Messiah was there to do. They expected Alexander the Great reincarnated. They expected a war against the Romans where they would be victorious and then they would take their seat among all the powerful nations of the world, just like it had been in the days of King David. But they started doing Satan's work without really realizing it. Just like society does today. To work for Satan, all you have to do is take something biblical and righteous and invert it, calling it something good. Let me give you some examples. We're excited that when we find our soulmate, that person that we want to spend 30, 40, 50, even 60 years together. I mean, nobody, nobody ever looks down on two kids who are in love. We embrace it, we celebrate it, and we rejoice in it. And all is well and good until someone says, well, I have feelings for someone of the same sex. But after all, love is love, and love is God given, therefore it's okay for me to love whom I want to love. And here where we see our sinful natures rearing its ugly head. We prefer that emotion of love which God has given the human race for the procreation. And they have perverted it into something obscene and horrible. This is Satanism at work. When God made you in your mother's womb, God didn't have a bad day. God was doing, he knew what he was doing, and he made you in just the way he wanted. He assigned you a sex. He knew that what he was doing was correct. And when you were born, it was as God intended. He didn't make a mistake. But people who believe that once you're born, that you can select what sex you identify with. And this is Satanism at work. When a woman gets pregnant, we all look forward to the birth of a child. We look forward, forward to them, seeing them grow and mature. When they first begin to take the first steps, 
and those of you who have been parents know that when we take the first steps that your life as a parent is going to change radically because they are much faster than you ever considered and they can get from one place to another much quicker than you ever thought was possible and when they're there they will get into something they're not supposed to be in. But we love our children and we are thankful. But to some, a child in the room is nothing more than a clump of cells. And if it doesn't fit her lifestyle, or maybe she just really doesn't feel it's convenient for her, they will take those clump of cells, that child, and learn it, just for the convenience of the mother. And that is Satanism at work. Jesus knew that he had come to take up a cross and to follow the will of his heavenly Father. It was absolutely, positively necessary that he must go to Jerusalem. He must suffer unjustly at the hands of wicked and hateful men. It was required that he die a cruel death on the cross and three days later he raised again by the power of Almighty God. <coughs> by doing so, he took your sins and my sins and paid the price that you and I could not pay and would not pay. He died for us. So he calls upon us to take up our own cross and follow him. So often, however, this seems that we misunderstand what their cross is. Our cross is not something common to all people. Difficulties at work, illnesses and disease, struggles and relationships are not necessarily the crosses because they are common to all human beings. Rather, the cross that Christ calls for you and I to take up is something he places us to do willingly to suffer because we are his followers, because we are his believers, because you and I are his disciples. Loving the unlovable, caring for the lonely and the forgotten, sharing a hug with the untouchables, volunteering to help those in need, maybe it's something like providing a right to worship for a newcomer in our community giving to the Lord above and beyond the tithe to help us meet the unusual ministry challenges. God places many crosses at our feet and it's up to us to pick it up and follow Christ. A beautiful corporate example of taking up our crosses can be seen in a church, small little church in Kansas. It's St. Paul's in Duluth, and they canceled their Sunday service and traveled, taking their Sunday's offering with them to support a neighboring congregation in eastern Kansas who had just discovered the recent loss of every, every dollar in their congregational treasury and savings for a new crop. What a wonderful way to show the love of God in Christ to their brothers and sisters in need. They traveled 120 miles to worship with these people and they gave them their offering for the week. One of the things that most of us don't like to confront is that you and I need a dead Jesus to have died for our sins. We need a Jesus to have shed his blood in our place so that our sins are forgiven. Without a Jesus dying on the cross fully and completely, trusting in the Father to resurrect him, your faith and my faith is in vain. But with a suffering Messiah, a Messiah who was tortured and beaten, spit upon, and hung on a cross, and who died, and when your guiding Almighty God resurrects him, it is the power of God to redeem you and to redeem me from our sins and from the eternal torment of hell. 
Finally, Jesus said, The Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. Many people are going to take that up and say, I have to do good works. We Lutherans know that this is the truth. It is our faith in Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice on the cross that gets us into heaven. It is not doing good works. The good works that we would do are a mere response of what God has first done for us. And what Jesus asked you and I to do is to take up our cross and to do in his name. To do the things that we talked about a few minutes ago. To love the unknowable. To reach out and help one another when we're struggling through crisis in faith. Sometimes it's going to visit someone in the hospital who is alone and afraid of the operation that is about to take place. Sometimes it's just making a call and sharing a friendly word with somebody who is alone most of the time. Our faith and what God promises to reward us with the gift of eternal life. It's not because we're better looking than anybody else. It's not because we're better than anybody else. Because we have the gift that God has given us and that that is the gift of faith. So how is the Holy Spirit working in you? What cross is Jesus placing before you today? How will you respond in joyful service to your Savior? How will you take up your cross and follow Jesus? I don't have those answers. And I pray that you do in your life. But one thing I do pray is that may God graciously give you eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts filled with compassion as you take up your cross and follow Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we worship God with our ties and offerings.
Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son fulfilled all righteousness and submitted the baptism of the sinners of the Jordan. Well pleased, you opened the heavens for us and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. As you have joined us to Christ's death and resurrection by holy baptism, and have given us your spirit, strengthen our hearts and open our ears to hear your holy word, and we rejoice that you have made us your beloved children in you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, as you have opened heaven to your church in holy baptism, give for faith with teachers to proclaim your Son, Jesus Christ, and all that it works with God that many would repent of their sins and join in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Son, Jesus, is the Christ and the true King of the world. Grant great humility to the rulers of the nations, that they would submit to the preaching of his holy word for the sake of their own souls and for the good of your holy people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, have compassion on your creation. Deliver from danger all who are threatened by natural disasters, dangerous weather, war, pestilence, flood, or famine. Provide all that is needed for this body and life. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, you sent your son as a servant who will preserve the wounds weak and the faith of burning away. Let us on behalf of those of you who are feeling and delivered, especially we have told to you, Betty Romero, Willie Lake, Lila Wiggins, Jason Fallon, Rosa Sanchez, Jim Back Brown, Cheryl Horvath, Lee Lankowitz, Larry Brody, Marty Brody, Doris Miller, Alain de Guzman, and John Gaynor. Provide healing, restoration, and justice according to your very gracious will. And grant that we will always and rejoice in your son's everlasting faithfulness towards us. Lord, in your mercy. For God in baptism, we were buried with Christ to the death and raised with him to walk in the newness of life. As we partake of holy communion today, give us repentant hearts to receive Jesus in body and blood for the forgiveness of sin. Lord, in your mercy. We praise the Lord for Matthew Havens this week of his birthday. Lord God, Heavenly Father. You have called the church for every tribe and nation. Grant that your people throughout the world would rejoice in the death and resurrection of Christ and live of those who have died and risen with him in holy baptism. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. He's right. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks for the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give you thanks for your boundless love. Show it to us when we send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and lay on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels of the archangel, and with all the company of heaven, who lie and magnify your glorious name, ever more praise of you and sin.
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the day in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. As often as you do this, be in remembrance of me. Likewise, when he suffered him, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks and praise. He gave it to them, saying, Take all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. As often as you do this, do the remembrance for me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
I hope everyone's enjoying reading through the Bible in a year. Uh, I think today's reading was in uh, Exodus, so I hope you're following along. If you got a late start or fell off the wagon, hey, pick it up and, and, and catch up or work on your own schedule. But I strongly encourage everyone to read through the Bible in a year. Um, go to that Sunday. Coffee and donuts are in the kitchen and Bible study in the fellowship hall. And we're thankful to have Dean and Wyatt and Bud back, so life is good. Any other uh, announcements of Prince of Wisdom? And then go in peace, serve the Lord.